I call upon uh, Dr. Rama Jaisundar, uh, who is the scientist at uh, AIMS, who is doing the research on the Gayatri Mantra, to come on the stage. So, good afternoon and uh, my wishes on this very, very auspicious day. And I thank Dr. Sushrut for having uh, invited me uh, to speak on this topic on this very, very auspicious day. Now, before I go on to the scientific research on Gayatri Mantra, uh, I would like to start uh, um, with some uh, uh, introduction so that uh, the work is seen in context. So let's start with some very basic uh, uh, um, information, like what is mantra? Mananath Trayate Iti Mantra, that's one of the uh, meaning and definitions for mantra. It means that which protects because of repeated utterance and that is mantra and if you look at our scriptures there are very many attributes and you know uh, a lot of information about why a mantra has to be used and what is its purpose and point. So for example um, the scripture says that one of the prerequisite for spiritual advancement and attainment, higher attainment is mantra and mantra instills focused concentration so just like when we meditate it increases our concentration we have to focus and uh, the same uh, 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 the same uh, thing can be expected uh, by chanting a mantra as well and mantra is supposed to lead to deeper spiritual awakening so it can produce a spiritual effect associated with the physical sensation when a mantra is chanted and there is always, there are very many mantras and uh, every mantra has a purpose, every mantra has an intent and create a physical pressure. And this picture is uh, a picture of a sound wave. Uh, this was in, um, uh, in the 1950s uh, in the Bell's lab where you can actually visualize, uh, picturize a sound wave. So what is Gayatri Mantra? Gayatri Mantra is considered one of the most potent and most powerful of the mantra and as I said there are very many mantras and uh, Gayatri Mantra is the most considered the most potent. That which protects those who repeat or mediate, meditate upon it is what the meaning of this uh, uh, Gayantam Trayate Iti Gayatri and we all know what the Gayatri Mantra is Om Bhur Bhuvaswaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhyo Yona Prachodayatu. And you can see the rough English translation of it. Let the omnipresent energy that we meditate upon purify, kindle, and illuminate our intellect and guide us along a path of righteousness. And uh, Gayatri Mantra is considered a supreme vehicle for enlightenment, a way to reach the most supreme form of existence. It illuminates the intellect, awakens the vital energies, bestower of all that is beneficial. These are some of the very many attributes uh, given to Gayatri Mantra. Now with this brief introduction, uh, let me uh, go on to research in Gayatri Mantra. This is a field which is wide open. There are a whole lot of things that can be done. If we want to look at Gayatri Mantra as just a sound, from a physics point of view, there are very many things, even if you remove the spiritual aspect to it, if you want to look at it as a collection of frequencies and sounds, there are a whole lot of things that can be done. We know that sound causes uh, uh, changes at the physical level, so you can find out whether there are changes caused at the physical level. If there are physical changes caused in a biological system, it is going to have a physiological repercussion as well. And if there is a physiological repercussion, there is going to be a psychological repercussion as well. So a mantra can be read. So one can read the Gayatri Mantra, one can chant the Gayatri Mantra, one can meditate upon it. Each of these will have different effects uh, in the human system. And I asked two very simple questions. Does chanting Gayatri Mantra affect measurable neurochemical changes in brain? Uh, the reason I chose Gayatri Mantra was because it's one of the most powerful and potent mantra. If at all the mantras can cause any change in the 
uh, in, the, in the brain, then you know, then one would expect Gayatri Mantra uh, uh, to be causing it. And uh, uh, whether the question is whether these are measurable. So we have techniques, but then every technique has its own limitations. And whether the changes are uh, going to be very subtle that it's going to elude these techniques or whether we can pick up the changes with these any of these techniques that was the idea I had in mind when I started this work and if there are measurable changes the measure it's not only measurable changes it has to be reproducible as well because in science that's very important the reproducibility if there are changes are these language dependent in other words is it the are, are they the words which are important in the Gayatri Mantra or the meaning? If the meaning is the is what is very important, then we should be able to convert that meaning into any other language. And if we chant that, are we going to have similar uh, changes? So these were the two questions I had addressed. And so the uh, the. Gayatri Mantra in Sanskrit, you know, and this is the English translation I had used of the Gayatri Mantra, may not be the perfect translation, but I was trying to sync it with the time taken to chat a Gayatri Mantra. So the English translation is, let the omnipresent, omnipresent energy that I meditate upon purify, kindle and illuminate our intellect and guide us along a path of righteousness. So I had uh, chosen um, healthy right-handed male volunteers in the age group 20 to 30, 30 of them. And the technique I chose was magnetic resonance spectroscopy. The reason I chose this technique was because it's a non-invasive technique. Uh, so the uh, no invasion, no intervention is required to measure the changes uh, in the brain of the volunteer. And uh, this is a technique which is, which is uh, done in the scanner, MRI scanner. I am sure you all are, uh, would have heard of MRI scans. So the same scanner that is used to obtain MR images in the radiology department, the same scanner is, can be used to obtain, um, do what is called magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So here you see the uh, spectrum. You see two. So this is the axial uh, 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 section of a brain, a normal brain, and you can see two voxels there, two squares there. So from that area, volume, uh, one can get the do the MR spectrum, get the MR spectrum, and you can see the uh, peaks there. So you can see NAA. NAA stands for N-acetyl aspartate, and you see two NAAs there. So these are from two different functional groups of this chemical, neurochemical, which is presumed to be uh, in the neurons. So the presence of N-acetyl aspartate is a reflection of the neuronal integrity and the neuronal uh, health. And you can see the other peaks: glutamate, creatine, choline. MI stands for myoinositol, and so on. So what I was looking for, so when you, when you look at the brain, you have this left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And uh, it is known that there are asymmetry, asymmetrical uh, distribution structurally as well as physiologically. So physiologically and structurally there is an asymmetry which means that the left and the right brain are not exactly the same. And you see a reflection of this in the MR spectrum as well. So if you look at the neurochemicals from the left hemisphere, from a part of the brain in the left hemisphere, and the, the corresponding part in the right hemisphere, you will see that there is an asymmetrical distribution of it. So here you see the uh, huge peak, uh, n acetyl aspartate. If you look at it from, obtain it from the other part of the brain, you will not see the same height. So there will be some difference. So I was trying to see whether Gayatri Mantra brings in not only changes these, but whether there is any change in the asymmetrical distribution of these neurochemicals. So this is the study plan. Um, so the study went on for a period of nine months, broken into blocks of three blocks of three months. So the first three months was a baseline data, and the next three months involved chanting by the volunteers and then the following three months was the follow-up period. You can see that there are the volunteers have been divided into three groups. One group chanted Gayatri Mantra uh, in Sanskrit uh, 108 times. The second group chanted Gayatri Mantra in English. The, the English translation was uh, read out 108 times. And then there was a third group who did not do any chanting. 
So the MR uh, spectrum was obtained every week for the entire period of nine months. So there were 36 spectra which were obtained. So every month, uh, every week, uh, there was the volunteer uh, came in to get the MR spectroscopy done. So the baseline, the first three months had 12 spectra recorded. The active period, that is when the chanting was done, uh, again 12 spectra were rec uh, recorded. And then the follow-up period, you know, whether any changes that occurred because of the chanting, did they sustain uh, that for the follow-up, uh, the next three months that was recorded in the, uh, for between seven to nine months. And the recitation time was uh, uh, early morning, 4 to 5.30 a.m. So the volunteers during the recitation, the active period, they got up, uh, uh, they chanted the Gayatri Mantra or read the English translation of it uh, between uh, 4 to 5.30 a.m. every day and 108 times, whether it's a mantra or the English translation. The chants were recorded and checked for correct pronunciation, rhythm, number of repetitions, etc. So when I say 30 volunteers, actually more than 100 volunteers were recruited for the study and uh, many of them, uh, you know, uh, they could not uh, uh, either recite the Gayatri, the, the chant these uh, uh, regularly or, you know, they did not do it properly, the pronunciation was not proper. So those were, they were all removed from the study. So this is the spectra you see uh, here, uh, uh, two, one from the left hemisphere. I focused on the frontal lobe of the brain because that is considered to be associated with higher intelligence. And um, so you can see the uh, MR spectrum from the left side. You, you see that uh, small box there from that volume from the left uh, frontal lobe on the right frontal lobe and you can see that there is an asymmetrical distribution of the chemicals, neurochemicals here. And uh, this is the uh, 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 graph uh, of the results. So I don't want to go into the nitty gritty details, technical details, but what I would like to draw your attention is this uh, dotted line that you see here. So that comes at zero, uh, uh, um, where that's a zero point, which means that uh, 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 a data point coming on that dotted line means that the chemicals, neurochemicals on the left and the right side, they were equally distributed. So there were, they were equal in, in concentration. So you see here that the first, the baseline period here, you see a random, so you see the deviation from the zero point, which means that there was an asymmetrical distribution of these neurochemicals. And during the chant, this is the chant of the Gayatri Mantra in Sanskrit. You can see that the, the, the lines were uh, touching down, trying to touch down zero. Uh, so implying that the, the asymmetrical distribution of the neurochemicals was uh, coming down. It was coming closer to unity. And then the third, uh, the last three months, the follow-up period, you can see that the, F, the changes that were, that started were initiated during the active period, it was sustained for the next three months. Now this is the uh, uh, most interesting part of the study um, as far as I am concerned. So you, the, the, the graph at the top is uh, from volunteers who recited the Gayatri Mantra in Sanskrit and the lower one is a graph of, from volunteers who recited it, who read the English translation equivalent. So you see that in the baseline uh, period, you see a random variation, which means that in both the groups there were asymmetrical distributions of the, in the neurochemicals. But then here you see what happens in the active period. In the active period, in the group who chanted the Gayatri Mantra in Sanskrit, you see the tendency of these asymmetry to reduce, to become equal, whereas the same random variations continued in the group which read the English translation. And then the in the follow-up period, of course, whatever was... Um, uh, you know, the changes that occurred because of the uh, chanting in Sanskrit, it continued. In fact, you know, the, the, uh, the, the graph looks much better in the follow-up period because what was initiated during the active period is, uh, you know, is sustained in this period. And then in the second one where the, in the group of volunteers who read out the English translation, you again see the same random, uh, random uh, uh, fluctuations. 
So the key observations in the study was that during the baseline, that is when there was no chant, there were random variations, which you see it in all the volunteers, all normal volunteers, you see these variations. Uh, it's nothing abnormal. And during the period of the chant, when the chanting was done in Sanskrit, a noticeable trend towards unity was observed. Whereas in the group which chanted the English translation, there were the random variations continued. In the follow-up period where there was no chant, uh, in the post-Sanskrit uh, uh, period, you know, the, the chant period, the trend towards unity was sustained. And in the group which uh, read out the English translation, the random variations that were observed during the baseline period and during the active period, they were uh, seen in the follow-up period as well. So the preliminary inferences uh, uh, are that the Gayatri Mantra does cause uh, measurable neurochemical changes in the frontal lobe of the brain and the changes were language dependent, which means that the, the Sanskrit language, uh, the changes caused by Sanskrit language was different to the ones caused by obviously there were changes caused by the um, by the english uh, by when the volunteers read out the english translation as well but then the changes were very very different and uh, so this is a is a kind of preliminary uh, inference it's not a conclusive because there are a whole lot of other studies that need to go along with this so i end my uh, um, presentation here uh, it was a 15 minutes presentation i had timed it so uh, so I have given two quotations here. One is by uh, uh, Nikola Tesla, a physicist. He says that if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And second, you see an uh, unknown quote. I do not know uh, who had, who had uh, said this, but I really like this. Vedas are sound vibrations in literary form. And this is what one of the previous speaker had also said that the rishis uh, uh, who actually they were drishtas, you know, they, they were not, they did not uh, uh, come up with these uh, Vedas, but you know, they saw it and then they wrote down. So I uh, thank you and I again thank Dr. Shushrut for giving me this wonderful opportunity to uh, talk on uh, this aspect of my research work. Thank you.